What's up everybody? Nick here from Part-Time Pilot. Uh, this video is going to be about turns around a point or turns in a rectangular pattern uh, with wind. So uh, we're going to show you an example with no wind. Uh, we're going to show you an example with wind where you don't make any corrections. And then we're going to show you an example where you do make corrections and what sort of corrections you'll need to make depending on the direction of the wind. And uh, stay tuned for the end of this video. I'm going to share a tip um, during my training that I learned from one of my instructors that really helped me on my turns around a point. So we'll see if it helps you guys too. And then comment below uh, what helps you guys um, so we can share what really helps us during training um, when we're actually flying these patterns. Okay, so let's get to it. So first, we're, it's just a perfect rectangular pattern uh, with no wind. Each turn is 90 degrees. Um, uh, so and it's perfect. There's no wind each turns 90 degrees and we're able to make a path directly over these roads And now we have wind from the west Okay, so the black arrow is the wind coming out of the west and this is if we do not make any wind corrections We still do the same 90 degree turns So here the first one uh, first leg we're flying with into the wind uh, with a headwind the wind does not push us off course because it's a direct headwind. Um, if it was not a direct headwind, if we had any crosswind component, uh, it would push us off a little bit. So we're able to fly our course right over that road. Um, it will slow us down in terms of ground speed, but it will not push us off course. And now if we make this uh, 90 degree turn, uh, we'll now, uh, if that's all we do, the same 90 degree turn, this wind is now a crosswind from our right and it's going to push us off the road. Our course is going to be pushed off the road below us. The wind has pushed us off course to the east. Now we make the turn, uh, again a 90 degree turn, and now we have a tailwind. Uh, again now, because it's a direct tailwind, the wind is not pushing us off course to the left or right. Uh, it will increase our ground speed. Um, so we'll have to be cognizant of that. But if we're not cognizant of this wind and we do then another 90 degree turn after this leg now when we make our 90 degree turn we're now we have our crosswind is from the left right the wind's still on the left but now it's on our left side and again it's going to push us if we don't do anything it's going to push us off course again to the east um so now we're even further east of our rectangular pattern um and we're in danger of you know running in into other patterns or or something like that so so that's an example uh you know with wind if we ha we make no corrections and we're not cognizant of the wind and preparing ahead of time so now how do we m still make this pattern um with the wind how do we still make the rectangular course right over the top of these roads uh with wind so that's going to be with our wind corrections and to do this, the first leg, we just have a headwind, so no correction is needed. Uh, and then when we turn for our next leg, we're not going to turn 90 degrees. So our nose was pointed here uh, along this road. And then when we turn 90 degrees, our nose is now pointed along this road. But we know from the last example that if we turn the full 90 degrees and have our nose pointed along this road here, that we're going to get pushed off in this course here. Okay, so what we do is we turn less than 90 degrees when we're traveling into a headwind and turning into a crosswind. So when we're traveling into a headwind and turning into a crosswind, we want to turn less than 90 degrees and we want to end up with our nose slightly pointed into the wind. What this is going to do is it's going to counteract the wind pushing us this way and it's going to keep the course of our travel right along the road where we want it to be. Okay, so we're slightly pointed into the wind by turning less than 90 degrees so that our nose does not end up along this road, but it actually ends up into the wind and we call that a crab okay we're crabbed into the wind and when we do that uh we're going to get the course right along the top of the road that we want okay so from a headwind to a crosswind we want to turn less than 90 degrees 
uh, so that our nose is pointed or crabbed slightly into the wind. So we counteract the push of the wind to the east and maintain our course over the road. Uh, now, when we turn uh, into our tailwind, we're going to have to turn greater than 90 degrees to get our nose onto the road. Because it's a tailwind, we know that it's not gonna push us to the left or the right, so we want our nose directly on the road uh, so we can travel straight down the road. So it's gonna be a turn a little bit greater than 90 degrees, and then we can travel, there's no correction needed, and we can travel straight down that tailwind. Uh, our ground speed is gonna be higher this time, so we're gonna have to be cognizant of that. Um, and then uh, now when we get to the next point, we're again turning into a crosswind. This time the crosswind is gonna be to our left. So when we turn, we're going to want to, whereas before when our crosswind was from our right, we went from a, he a headwind to a crosswind. Now when we go from a tailwind to a crosswind, we're gonna have to turn more than 90 degrees. So we travel down here on our tailwind. And then if we make a turn of 90 degrees, our nose will be pointed along this road. But as we know from uh, the example before, when we made no correction, that pushed us this way off to the east, off our road. Okay, so we don't wanna do that. What do we wanna do? We wanna crab into the wind. You always wanna crab into the wind. So now since our wind is on our left, that requires a turn more than 90 degrees. Okay, so 90 degrees would be to here and then more than 90 degrees to crab our nose into the wind, point our nose into the wind, again, to counteract the wind pushing us to the east, we want to point ourselves into the wind and counteract that push. So when we do that, when we point into the wind, we counteract that push and we're able to travel right along the road, right above the road on the course that we want, uh, because again, we've pointed our nose, we've crabbed into the wind, um, by doing a turn uh, greater than 90 degrees. So you're probably thinking this is a lot to think about while flying. And if you're doing turns around a point, like let's say the point's right here, and you wanna make a perfect circle kind of around this, uh, above these roads, right? Uh, it, a very easy way to do this, now if the wind again is still uh, from the west, a very easy way to do this where you don't even have to think about the wind. You don't have to know the wind direction because it's hard to know exactly the wind direction at all times when you're up flying. So the easy, an easy way to do this, which I learned from my instruct, one of my instructors, is to pick a point. Um, so if you're right here, our aircraft is right here, you want to pick four points around your circle, around your point, that are all equidistant, so the same distance from that point, right? So you're picking uh, points on the ground. So you find something on the ground, like a bush, you know, a building, um, you know, part of the road, uh, a sign, something, and you want to fly over that point. And what that does, you your instincts will just track that point. So if you're flying here, you're flying along here, and you're getting away from that point you're gonna turn the nose to the west because you, you can just feel that the wind is pushing you off that point. So you're gonna be like, oh, I need to turn to the right. And you're gonna make the corrections, the, the minor corrections and get to that point in the middle. And then you pick your next point, right? So then you pick the point over here. And again, you wanna track to that. So if you start your turn and it starts pushing you in like this, again, you know, you wanna track, you wanna turn the opposite way so you track that point and what this does is when you just focus on those four points along the ground you just instinctively make the corrections at real time and you don't even have to know the direction of the wind yes it's good to know the direction of wind yes it is uh you know smart to always be cognizant of the wind direction uh but uh for turns around a point and for maneuvers like this this helped me immensely so uh you guys should really try this out in your training um, bring it up with the instructor, make sure they're okay with that. Um, obviously they have the final word, your flight instructor on what you do for your training. But, uh, if it works for you, it worked for me. And, um, like I said, comment below what works for you guys. Um, if you guys have any tips for fellow student pilots, 